in the previous session, I've done the necessary logic. I've provided the code to read from the database. And I have managed to go and store it in a special data table variable. So what is data table? Data table is actually a page inside the book. So what is the book? The book is actually a data set. So the book can have as many data table it wants. Okay, data table is just a page inside the book. Now then after that, uh, this is actually the return statement, right? So notice that, am I returning the book? No, I'm just returning one page inside the book, right? Because that is what the web form wants. Now notice that right now the get all department data, it is not complaining. Why? Because I've already provided a return value. If I comment this one out, you notice that it will start complaining. Hey, please remember to put there. Okay, so I will put it back. Now in this session, I'm, I'm actually going to add a new web form. I need to go and add a web form. So notice that I right click on the project title in the solution explorer and I'm going to add a new web form. And the name of this web form is called FRM drop down list and then after this one I'm just going to put department right it's just a web form that for me to go and practice how to go and use the drop down list and bind the drop down list to the information that is going to return by uh, the logic that we have seen just now so I'm going to add now first thing first is that I would like to go and create a div ID equals to div message here, right? And then run add equals to server. Then after that, in order to go and make this div more visible, I'm going to put a style type text, okay? And then after that, I'm going to tell the browser that, hey browser, can you please find this div message? And then after that, uh, apply a border on it. Right, a border of uh, two pixels and the border style. I want it to be solid color. Let it let us have it navy and the width of this div. Let me see. Mm, Four hundred pixels will be nice. And then what about the minimum height? The minimum height. I will just put it as forty pixels. Okay, so I have a div. Now after the div, I would like to go and add a drop down list. So what is a drop down list? ESP colon drop down list. ID equals to L, L, not one, uh, L, okay, LSD department, right, department, and then, of course, I must remember to go and provide the run ad equals to server, so, am I creating an empty drop-down list? Yes, I am creating an empty drop-down list, okay, now, besides that, I'm actually going to whack in a nice, nice button, ID equals to BTN, Test. So this is the ID that I'm going to give for the button and run ad. I'm actually going to put what? Uh, server again. Now this button needs a label. The label I'll just say test, test the water. Okay, test, test the water. Right, see whether it is hot or cold. Okay, now. So I've already defined the necessary controls. How many controls have I defined? One div server control, one drop down list web control, and one button web control so let me take a look at the design mode yes everything is nice right now so coming back to the source I've already defined a well-formed controls and right now I need to focus on the code behind file so notice that right now I'm going to expand the web form notice that when I expand the web form I will see my code behind file right beneath it right the with the .aspx.cs extension so I'm actually trying to work on the page underscore load event method why why i need to go and work on the page underscore load event method let me prove it to you why so right now i'm actually using the div and i'm actually going to put in a html and i'm going to put running 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 okay running 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 so then after that i will so this is actually one c sharp code right this is actually one c sharp code this is actually one C-sharp command that I've placed inside the page underscore load event method. So let me actually test out this web form. View in browser and let me see what will happen. Da -da 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 Coming up. Ah, see this word called running, 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 right? What does it mean? It means that this command was executed. Why is this command executed? Why is this command executed? Right, it is executed is because I placed it inside the event method called page underscore load. So this command will execute when the page is loading. 
basically this is actually what we call the event method you must place the command in the correct event or else it won't execute okay so this is the best place that I'm going to put some code I'm going to put some code here I'm going to put some code here what, what is the code I'm going to put some code here to uh, get the LSD department drop down list right uh, to use the department information right the department information right the department info is going to be obtained from the database right but of course not directly from the database as what I've emphasized in figure one in the first page of the chapter three of the module notes okay so come back so this running here definitely I don't want to see a MT drop down list. I want to see sales and marketing, finance and research inside the drop down list. How am I going to do that? Right now, before I do that, I need to empower the code to use whatever logic they have placed inside the app underscore code. So I need to go and do this. I need to go and start using using what using uh, what is the name of this project experiment drop down list. So please, please, I'm telling the donor engine, please use all the effort that I've placed inside the app underscore code which belongs to this project right this is the name of the project another thing is that using I'm going to put by using system dot data okay why because I also need to go and declare a variable uh, which is a data table variable to hold the returned results now so right now let me actually start creating the data table data table right data table so can I create a data table so uh, data table what a uh, page in the book okay I can just create a name called a page in a book right and it is actually going to be a new data table just that it's empty okay then what next next is that uh, I need to go and create the uh, uh, object right where is this object name it's called the department Department, department what? Department manager. Okay. Now, what class is this department manager? It is actually going to be called uh, C department manager. Right. C. Oops. 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 So C department manager. So this is the class, right? So I have already created an object derived from derived, right? From the C department manager equals to new C department manager. Okay. Right. Then after that, I'm going to call call what call the get get what get all something get all department get all what get all department data method that belongs to the that belongs to the department manager object that i have created just now okay department manager i hope i have no typo then when i call the get all method it will definitely return me one page and that page is going to contain all the department information and i'm going to copy them into my this a page in a book variable here okay right so then after that i will actually want to go and tell the drop down list hey drop down list you better start using the page right start uh, start what start referring start referring to the page that I'm going to let you take a look right start referring to the page right then after that I'm going to call it a page in the book right I can do that but of course the drop down list does not have such properties start referring to a page it's called what data source okay right then after that I have to go and tell the drop down list that a hey, drop down list right drop down list right you don't know do you know that this is actually the column this is actually the column that you need to refer to to show to the user so the drop down list said that okay you want me to go and show the text to the user you better supply the column name into my data text field property so I have to go and provide department name inside okay now what about the next thing right each information is uniquely represented by a number right so the drop down list know that and i need to go and supply that as well data value field and notice that i'm providing it inside the uh i'm actually going to put the department record department record id information inside that so notice that these are the information that i've provide i'm providing into the respective properties that belongs to the 
drop down list so that the drop down list will know that oh okay i need to refer to this column to show to the user oh okay i need to refer to this column so that when the user select something i will know what number the user has made a choice okay so let me actually test can test or not yes can can test code so many things don't test we all sure die one okay so right now i have already saved all my work and i'm going to view in browser right click on the presentation file view in browser and let us have a look right hey nothing eh? nothing eh? nothing 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 why because i only tell the drop down list see this see that but i did not tell the drop down list start reading damn it no 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 it's not start reading it's called what dot what dot data bind okay dot data bind but that means start using okay start using all the info that i have given you thank you very much right okay so in other words if i actually try to go and refresh and i will start praying come on come on pray 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 pray, pray. Hey, how come not not working why ah uh, i need to what right click rebuild and let me try again let me try again right refresh come on come on come on come on ah, ha, 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 ha. see that right what is the translator html code view source we must always learn to view source notice that it has been translated to the select tab because browser understand html select code in order to display a drop down list notice that the browser also knows that okay if the user selects sales and marketing I will know that the user have made a choice value of one if the user selects finance i will know that the user has made a choice on two if the user selects research i know that the user has made a choice of three okay so this is actually a very quick demonstration of how we can actually bind the drop down list to a data table of record information okay now so this is actually what happens on the page load right now let us actually do a quick test on what happens when the user selects okay what happens if the user selects so this is what i'm going to do i double click on the button and notice that right now the btn test is up and double check again notice that when i double click the source code if you check the source code it will automatically put this attribute inside right it will attribute put automatically put this attribute inside notice that this is the event method name btn test underscore click which is this one right so in other words the button will know that if it is being clicked it must get all the code residing inside this btn underscore click to take action on the click event okay so what are the actions needed to be taken number one i would like to go and find out what has the user selected so div message dot in a html i just anyhow put lst department dot selected item dot text right so i'm just so this is the text property that belongs to the selected item property the selected item property will always represent the item that the user has selected so let me actually just rebuild and let me actually go back to the browser here let me refresh okay the, so let's just say that i go and select research so if i click test test the water notice that it shows sales and marketing huh why sales and marketing i selected research why it shows sales and marketing i select finance how come still shows sales and marketing and how come no matter what kind of selection i've placed right say finance it resets back to what sales and marketing oh no what happened i tell you what happened because right all these code keep on executing every time when the page is refreshing or reloading we need to ensure that all this code is only capable of executing once so i'm going to put this one if page dot is post back if page dot is post back equals to false means that the user if the user is actually loading this web form for the very first time definitely the user is not clicking anything right so the user is not posting back any click event or what right uh, so in other words that if the user did not post back any click event anything right means that it should be false if false equals to false means execute this code okay right then after that i'm going to save it and right now let me go do a rebuild okay do a rebuild and come back to here right let me actually try to go back to the original state right refresh now so i'm going to select sales and marketing 
and I'm going to click test test the water sales and marketing if I'm going to select research and then if I click test test the water it shows research so I've already ensured that no matter how many times the page reloads all these code only executes once means what means that when I actually use the web form for the very first time this code will be executed but when I actually reload the web form for the second time how did I reload it by clicking this button it will reload but how did it reload because I'm clicking something I'm posting back a click event if I post back a click event this is post back it's not going to be false it's going to be true is true equals to false no that's why these code will not execute again that will reset the drop down list okay so this is actually a very quick demonstration on how we play with drop down list and also a quick intro on the purpose of using this page dot is post back okay Thank you very much. Thank you for your time.